I ended up getting pregnant at 15 and going into foster care. When I was 18, I gave him up for adoption because I thought that would be best for him. I was just lost and everything and I came back down here when I was 18 to like find my family and I found them, but I, then I also found drugs. So um, I was like homeless in the streets. Um, I spent seven years basically um, shooting up meth. I was living in like abandoned buildings and stuff. I never had a food stamp card, never had an ID, never had a license, never had a place like to live, literally. I had this routine. So I would start in Lansing, in the middle of Lansing, and I would be like, dig through dumpsters and find bottles and stuff. And then I would make it from three o'clock in the morning, I would be running around the streets, carrying these big old bags of bottles. <laughs> and I would go into Kroger at six o'clock in the morning, I would turn all my bottles in, and then I would get food to eat. Being on meth, like I could be up for weeks and not have to go to sleep. So it was just like really unsafe and scary. It all got really bad. Like I was like shooting up three times a day and I was doing a lot of it. It was either collecting bottles or I'd be like working on cars and stuff or like hanging around with people who worked on cars. They would steal cars and stuff and I would like help them like take care of them and stuff and we would get money for that. Yeah, so it was um, basically hell. So when I realized I hit rock bottom, it was when I was in jail. The people in there just like harassed me to the point where I just felt like just so weak and just ready to give up. And so I like tried to kill myself in jail. And I was like thinking to myself, I'm still a mom, you know, and there's still gonna be like that little boy that's gonna come looking for me. And when he finds me like this, or if he doesn't find me at all, how is that gonna make him feel? And like, I loved him. Like, I didn't give him up because I didn't want him. I gave him up because I loved him. There was the Hope's Pathway program in jail. And I got introduced to that like two months before I got out of jail. So like, I went to the class like every day and I completed the certificates and stuff. I feel like Glass House it is like a really good transition for you get out, you're in jail and you're like, it's like closed quarters, closed doors. And then when you get into Glass House, it's like you get like a little bit out into the community, a little bit out into the community, and you start doing a little bit for yourself, a little bit for yourself. And you get like people who understand like how it, like how it is, and they help you like navigate where you need to start going. Now I live at Women's Safe Harbor. I wanna be a counselor. I think for the degree, it's like three years but I feel like I could probably find something with that I can work like PRC or something like that, or just something that I don't really need the degree yet, but that will still be working towards that goal, you know? I don't think that's the end for me though, because I know that I have a lot of potential. I love Laura, like I really do, she's so awesome. Like I remember one day I was at the glass house and I was having like, I was having a problem that day. I don't even know, I can't remember what it was. But like all of a sudden they're like, Angela, can you come into the office? I was like, yeah, great, okay, sure. What I do, what I do this time. And it was Laura and she had these bright yellow flowers. And she was like, hi Angela, I just wanted to check on you and see how you're doing. I was like, oh my God, Laura, you just brought up my whole day. But no, she's really great to work with, she really is. Like she gets stuff done and she's like easy to talk to. And she's just really awesome, I love working with her. They have done a lot for me, really. Like, when I got out of jail, like, she literally brought me my birth certificate, social security card, my high school transcript. And then, like, just a couple, like, a couple weeks ago, we went to the Secretary of State and she literally, like, we did my driver's um, permit test. Never had that before, like, never. And, like, they helped me get into driving classes and everything, like, they hooked me up. I think how I got over it was God, really. Like, and it's so weird, like people like are like, but yeah, it's God. Cause it's like, I understand that I have a purpose and that that's not gonna like help me live in my purpose. And I hated the person that I was when I used. And now that I know that there's a better life and stuff like that, then I don't, you know, I'm good on that. Things are always hard, but the more that we push through the hard things and the more that we like dream, which is crazy, People don't dream, but it's crazy because it really comes true. You know, you just gotta like push through life. So I would just want people to know that it gets hard, but it always gets better. I would say to them that they have to have hope because, and they have to look back on the things that have went right. 
and try to look at the source of like, it's like you're not dead. There had to have been something that brought you out of that. So you have to embrace the things that bring you out of it, regardless if it's good or bad, but you have to understand that something is bringing you up. You have to be able to look at things, like even the bad is like, you know, something that you can embrace. If it wasn't for Peckham, I would not have my life this much together. And I would definitely be um, still trying to run up, you know? <laughs>